All right, hey everybody. Uh, let's go ahead and get started right on time because uh, I don't want to have to worry about going over on the other end. Rather start a little early. Um, hope you all had a nice lunch. Hope you're all awake. We're going to talk about Drupal 7, which is uh, everybody's favorite topic, I'm sure. Uh, if we haven't met, hi, I'm Mike. I'm a director at Acquia on our product team. Uh, my group is primarily responsible for our developer tools, everything we're doing in the headless arena, uh, and I'm also lucky to have all of our Drupalists that contribute back, like the Drupal Acceleration team, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, some contact info for me if you want to reach out after the talk. Uh, always enjoy connecting on LinkedIn, um, and the QR code will get you my email if you have any questions. Um, just to cut to the chase today, just in case any of you leave, um, big takeaway is coming out of this conference, if you still have something on Drupal 7, you need to do something. There's a few some things you can do, um, but if I see anybody walk out, I at least know you've gotten this message. You need to do something. Uh, feel free to unedit as you see fit. Um, what you do is somewhat up to you. Uh, and I'm not here to tell you you have to do any one of these things. Um, but my strong recommendation is to go one of two paths. Uh, get off Drupal 7 in some way, whether that is um, going to a modern version of Drupal, please, please go to a modern version of Drupal. Uh, going to Backdrop, which is a fork of Drupal 7, it's actually a slightly smaller lift, but you don't have to tell anybody I said that. Uh, or another CMS, let's not even, we're just, we're just not even going to broach that topic today. Or, um, if you're going to stay on Drupal 7, you should really consider getting some sort of long-term security support. Uh, Hero Devs is actually an Acquia partner. They're offering never-ending support for Drupal 7. There are a couple of other folks out there doing the same thing. Um, but all of this is coming about because the community is officially ending support for Drupal 7 in January of next year. So we're going to start off today, and we're going to talk about what that means for you, what does that mean for Drupal 7 sites, what do you need to do about it. We're going to talk about some tools. Uh, Acquia actually just released a tool. We'll talk more about that uh, that can help you. Um, and then we'll do some Q&A after a live demo. So first, what does an end of life mean? Uh, and why are we talking about this? So I don't know how often you all look at usage stats for Drupal. I, I look at them pretty regularly in my role. Uh, and this chart doesn't do, I think, anybody any favors. So I have a very lovely spreadsheet for all of you, uh, high quality. Drupal 7 represents roughly 42% of installs in the Drupal community today. Um, so that's more than Drupal 8, more than 9, more than 10, more than 11. Uh, and until very recently, um, Drupal 7 actually uh, was above 50% of the community. So this number's going down, but it's going down quite slowly. So statistically, if I was to do like that to the room, everybody on this side of the room would still have Drupal 7 sites out of all of you in here. Maybe you do, maybe you don't, no judgment. Um, but there's a lot, a lot, a lot of folks in the community that are still running Drupal 7. And the clock is ticking on that end of life in January. And talking to people, there, there's this big misconception among many folks that when something goes end of life, it just stops. And it doesn't, right? Like, you know, you're not going to look up and realize that the ground's gone. Um, but there are some really important things that, that will happen um, that I want to make sure you understand. So first of all, and perhaps the biggest thing, the Drupal security team will no longer be doing anything to secure Drupal 7. So a Drupal Geddon level vulnerability could be discovered in July of next year. They're not going to fix it. They're not going to distribute a fix. Um, security issues for Drupal today are not publicly disclosed. I don't know if any of you have ever worked with the security team or reported a security vulnerability. If you haven't, those go in through a private issue queue. Um, so the, the world at large cannot see those issues until they're fixed and committed. Again, all of that reporting infrastructure is going to go away. So if there is a critical security vulnerability for Drupal, it could get posted in the open, uh, which means bad actors could see that before there's a fix for it. Uh, Drupal.org is actually going to take down basically all of the infrastructure for Drupal 7, so they're not going to be distributing Drupal 7, uh, they're not going to be testing Drupal 7, they're not going to be bundling up new versions of Drupal 7. Um, something I hadn't thought about initially is a lot of the Drush functionality for Drupal 7 will stop working, 
right? Drush goes out to Drupal 7 to get uh, reporting status on version, um, dr you know, Drush make, stuff like that. All that goes away. Drush will still work. You can still Drush CC all and Drush ULI and do that sort of thing. But if you use Drush as any part of your bundling, installation, building process, that's going to stop working. Um, and I think uh, if you have any sort of automated security scanning at your uh, organization, CI, CD, platform level, et cetera, they're actually going to start telling you that Drupal itself is insecure uh, because it will now see that it's unmaintained, it's end of life, et cetera. It's an incomplete list. I'm sure there are a few other things. So what does that mean for you? I mean, like, realistically, nothing. I mean, we, we're going to hit January 6th, and nothing's going to change, right? So not unlike a construction zone, somewhere beyond the road closed sign, there, there is probably an end of the road. I mean, where exactly it is is going to depend a little bit on your organization, what modules you're using, how, what you're doing. Um, that, that end of the road is not going to be January 5th, 25. Um, but the farther you get past that date, sort of the higher your risk profile is going to be. Um, keep in mind that um, aside from security, which is what we're, we're primarily talking about now, um, PHP and MySQL compatibility will continue to be a, a challenge, right? Um, the PHP community actually just extended end of life, which is, which is good news. Uh, but PHP 8.2 will eventually go end of life. Um, as of today, Drupal 7 does not work with PHP 8.3. So we do have a bit of a, a ticker there. Um, so somewhere after that date, uh, you're going to want to be off Drupal 7. Another common misconception is, well, Drupal 7 is really old, right? Like, surely they found everything wrong with it by now. Uh, that's not necessarily true, right? This isn't a refrigerator that you've gotten past the first six months and now oh, it's fine. Um, people are constantly trying to hack and find vulnerabilities. And remember, there may not be a vulnerability today because nobody's discovered it. It's sort of Schrodinger's vulnerability, right? It, it could be there, we just don't know if it's there. Um, and without that security team to do the maintenance and do the deployments and do the fixes, um, that gets more, more challenging. Uh, in the last two years, roughly, um, there have been six moderately critical security releases for Drupal 7 core. That may not sound like a lot, uh, but remember, um, for the lawyers in the room, moderately critical is defined as a successful exploitation of the vulnerability may result in significant physical or, uh, or property damage or loss. So it, it may not be a highly critical vulnerability, but it, it, it is still a vulnerability, right? And I mean, my personal blog isn't a moneymaker. It's not a business website. It's not anything big. I would still be mortified if that site got compromised and porn bombed. Like, you know, you, you want to make sure that you're secure. Uh, and you also don't have to just take my word for this. Uh, Forbes released some data recently um, that cybersecurity is actually in the top 10 of all risks globally. So in the same risk as like natural disasters, um, Failure to mitigate climate change. Um, we find number eight here, which is widespread cyber, cyber crime and cyber insecurity. Um, so if you don't believe me, like I said, Forbes, Forbes at least is talking about this. But at the same time, like we know that upgrading and rebuilding a Drupal 7 site is really expensive. It's hard. It's non-trivial. Um, so what we're mostly going to be talking about today and doing a live demo of is, uh, is how you can actually do that faster and cheaper than you've been able to in the past. Um, if you've heard of Acquia's Migrate product, Acquia Migrate Accelerate, uh, previously this is something you had to be an Acquia customer to use. It was always free, but you had to be with Acquia. Um, we actually open sourced this last fall. Uh, so as of right now, um, you can actually go download AMA um, and it'll run locally, uh, it'll run on any cloud provider, including Pantheon, it'll run anywhere, and it's totally free. Um, we're going to show you how this works today, talk about it a little bit, um, and I think you'll find if you still have a Drupal 7 site, um, this is going to make your job a heck of a lot easier uh, to get into a modern version of Drupal. 
Uh, I want to give a special thanks uh, to this team of folks uh, and others, uh, Wim Lears, who's here at the conference, uh, and a number of people from our professional services team at Acquia who've been working not only on the open source effort, uh, but also to get AMA compatible with Drupal 10. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a moment. Uh, but if you see Wim, Wim is uh, really the, the principal maintainer of AMA at this point. So uh, please give him a, a, a handshake and a high five if you see him this week. Um, is anybody in here familiar with AMA? Has anybody used it before? Yeah, you don't count, Eric. OK, so um, what AMA is, is it's really a content and configuration migration tool, right? So, Anybody can go out and download Drupal 10, turn on the core migrate modules, write a YAML file, and move some content from point A to point B. The problem with that, right, is let's say on your Drupal 7 site you have 50 content types. And every one of those content types has at least 10 fields. And you have some blocks, and you have some views, and all of a sudden we're talking about hand creating a content model in Drupal 10 that is hundreds and hundreds of fields before you can even think about doing that migration, right? That's going to take forever. Uh, I have seen many, many million plus dollar plans to upgrade Drupal 7 sites. It's hard. AMA does all that automatically. So it'll go into your Drupal 7 site, it'll analyze your content model, it'll take that content model and automatically recreate it in a modern Drupal site, it'll write the migration automatically, and then it'll move the content in real time from your Drupal 7 site to a modern Drupal site. It's pretty slick. Um, the other thing that AMA does that's very handy is it has recommendation and migration paths for a bunch of contributed modules. I think it's something like 500 modules. Um, there's a caveat there. We'll come back to that. Um, but you know, if you have like the address field module, for instance, right? Address has kind of a weird schema for your fields. It's not part of core. AMA has recommendations and it has a pathway to handle modules like that that might impact your content model in Drupal 7 uh, going over. So a lot of power there to help speed this up. Uh, and we talked about all this. Cool. So what's changed, like I said, is really the fact that it's open source. Again, we, we recognize at this point in the ecosystem, uh, Acquia's customers, or maybe a, um, there are fewer customers at Acquia still running Drupal 7 than there are folks in the community. So we wanted to open this and make it freely available to try and help the community. Um, and this investment, I think, hopefully, you'll find really speeds up your efforts. Uh, we also did, as I said, upgrade it to work with Drupal 10 with an asterisk. Uh, we'll, again, we'll talk about that in a moment. You, you may, depending on how complex your site is, you may have a, a, a decision to make there. So what I mean by that is if you have a highly complex Drupal 7 site with a, like 200 modules, a bunch of custom stuff, you might find that AMA actually works a little better to go to nine first, Drupal nine, and then do the upgrade. Um, simple, Drupal, uh, simple Drupal seven sites, you can go ahead and jump all the way to 10. The reason for that is, frankly, there's so many custom module or contrib module recommendations, we just, we haven't been able to upgrade all of the module recommendations to be Drupal 10 ready. Um, and believe it or not, it is still faster to upgrade to Drupal nine and then sort of manually upgrade to Drupal 10 than it is to up, take a Drupal 7 site and rebuild it on Drupal 10 by hand. So it does work with Drupal 10. Depending on your use case, you may find you're going to get a little better recommendation upgrade path on Drupal 9. So let's talk about some real numbers. Our professional services team recently did some work with the University of Southern California, USC. And you know, a little bit of uh, you know, overview for one of their sites. Uh, it's not usc.edu, it's one of their other properties. But everything about this site is sort of um, information dissemination, right? They have video, they have a video uh, library and archive. They're collecting um, testimonies and historical records. And to do all this, there's like 43 plus content types on this site. Uh, it's, it's a lot. Um, I think the original estimate of rebuilding the site was something like 56 weeks. And look at, I mean, I used to be in consulting. Um, I, I've worked with many organizations, big and small. 
taking a team that is like doing day-to-day -day maintenance, content remediation, all the things that you do in your day job and finding out, oh God, I've got 56 weeks of work. Like that's a, that, that, that can be pretty uh, daunting of a task, whether you're working with a partner or doing it yourself. Um, when AMA got applied, uh, just using AMA actually dropped the estimate of the project by about 75%. Uh, so it shaved something like 42 weeks off of the, the project. 94% um, of the content, so again, there's, again, 43 content types, 20 plus taxonomies, et cetera, et cetera. 94% uh, of the content from the site was able to move from D7 to D10 automatically. Like there's no real developer effort to do that, just AMA did it. Um, and the team now, the remaining 25% of the estimate is all about custom modules, themes, et cetera. So let's talk about how it actually works. I'm gonna do a live demo. Um, I always hate smoke and mirrors in demos, so I like to be transparent with what I did to get ready for today. Um, so on my machine, I happen to be running two Lando containers. Uh, the D10 container, I actually put the code out on GitHub. If you wanna pull it down and, and play with it, you're welcome to. Um, I imported a Drupal 7 database. Uh, I realized I haven't touched a Drupal 7 site in like eight years, and it, Took me a little bit to remember how to do some things like clear the caches, but I, I got it working. Um, got the D10 site up and running, uh, added a second database service, so uh, I have two containers with three services. Um, set up a brand new Drupal 10 code base, uh, added um, Acquia Migrate, installed Drupal, removed like the basic page and article content types, because I'm not gonna be using those. Um, and I did do one import for AMA before we got here just because there were like 4,000 users and I didn't want to make you all sit there for 15 minutes while those imported. Uh, but that's about it. I haven't really done anything else to the site um, to make it uh, do anything. So uh, if you want to look at the Wayback Machine and see a very old looking Acquia website, uh, this is our old learning services training site. Um, this is the Drupal 7 site, I'm, I'm logged in. Um, this particular site only has a handful of uh, content types, right? You can see course, company profile, event page, etc. Quite a bit of content, um, mostly events because it's a learning services training site, so there's a lot of trainings that have been posted and archived on this site. Um, a few blocks, not too much, right? As, as Compared to modern sites using Layout Builder or Paragraphs or whatever, right? There's not there's not actually a ton of blocks here, but there's there's a few. Uh, and again, by far the largest count of entities on the site are in uh, the people. There's a ton of user accounts on this particular site. So uh, let's jump over to our Drupal 10 site, um, and I'm already looking at the AMA config on this site. So a couple things that have happened sort of behind the scenes. Uh, again, I, I, I've logged into my site. Um, I did set up a second database connection. So if uh, we quickly just go into our code, you know, here's my default database and here's my migrate database. Um, if you don't know how to do that with Lando, um, Again, I'll, I'll share the GitHub link with you, but you just add another service. It's pretty straightforward. You can do that with DDEV very quickly as well. Um, and just like any alternative database, right, like Drupal is not actually using this database, but AMA is. Um, and I also have my content files uh, inside this particular web route so I can get to them from the Drupal 7 site. So, Let's have a look at AMA. This is the actual migration dashboard. Looking down, you can see all of these different config bundles that it's detected in my Drupal 7 database. So as I mentioned before, I've only imported the one, uh, structured menu, um, user accounts, something like 4,500 users have been imported. Um, and now we can see that some of these other items still have unmet dependencies, right? So if I wanted to import the courses, if I wanted to import the events, you notice these still have dependencies on things like company profiles. Um, I actually wish the Drupal core showed some of this data, right? Because when you go into structure of content types back on the D7 site, 
there's not actually any indication at all from this level that the course content bundle has any dependencies on other config, <clears throat> but that's okay. Uh, AMA does that for me. So uh, again, let's start with courses uh, and I need company profiles and level taxonomy terms. So I can go through my list here and find company profiles. There we go. No unmet dependencies, those are ready to go. And level taxonomy terms also ready to go. So I can apply and AMA will go ahead and do that import. Those disappear from the list. You can see we jumped. Now 17% of this site is migrated, pretty slick. Um, and now if I come back to courses, my 337 courses, uh, I can pull. So we're gonna go ahead and pull in course language taxonomy terms and course, and let those run. And while those are importing, uh, let's have a look at uh, event. Event needs course language, cool, that's done. So now we can import events. There's 8,000 of those though, so I'm gonna ask you to take my word for it that those are gonna work, we're not gonna do that live. Uh, but we will do pages. We'll do Acquia certification terms, payment methods, vouchers, these are all ready to go, right? We're up to 26%, 27, it's just ticking away. Let's go ahead and pull in our web forms, menu links, et cetera, you get the idea. Fifty-six. We'll stop there for a moment. You'll see as we're doing imports that there are some items that need review. So if I actually want to see uh, what happened here, I can go in and look at the message. So in this case, it's telling me that there was a body format that was not a valid choice, so that may mean that like the HTML is broken on that page, like the, the uh, WYSIWYG editor is broken. I don't care, I can fix that. That's faster than rebuilding things, right? So you still wanna go through and have a look, but uh, again, having to go through and edit a few of these things, it's gonna give me the node ID. It's not hard to go find. So you can either mark those as complete or skip them. Um, pretty straightforward. Uh, and again, as we, as we click through, all we have to do is make sure that we're pulling in the items uh, that are dependencies, like say content blocks. Filter format, config, all right, we can grab all that and let it go. to 77%. These obviously have a few things. But um, this site very, very rapidly, in a matter of about five minutes, um, we have now migrated. And it's a little deceiving what's happening on this screen um, because this UI is so simple but um, as I mentioned to you before, like this is a Drupal 10 standard install profile that started with no content bundles. Well, when I go in, now we have company profiles, courses, events, pages, et cetera. Um, all of the fields for these are there. All right, very basic info, but they're there. Um, so on and so forth. Um, all of this content has been pulled over, right? Resources, become a developer, et cetera. All the content's here. Um, and if we really wanted to, we could go ahead and uh, import these last two uh, items. I'm just, again, for 9,000 of them, it's gonna, it's gonna take a little while. Um, so, highly, highly accelerates the process of doing that upgrade. Um, and if you want to see how I set up the, the repo and how I set everything up, it's Mike Madison 13, DrupalCon PDX 2024 on GitHub. Uh, you can pull that down. Um, it's nothing super fancy. It's literally an empty scaffold site, but you may find some benefit in looking at the Lando file um, for you to uh, check it out. Now, I, d I do wanna give you a couple of caveats, as I said before, about what this does. Um, AMA is an accelerator, 
it's not an upgrade ferry. So it doesn't, right, even though I make it look very easy, um, there's not magic here. Um, AMA is there to deal with content structure and content. If you have a thousand custom modules in your Drupal 7 site, first of all, shame on you. Um, second of all, you've got some work to do. Um, just because AMA doesn't touch the custom modules, it doesn't touch the custom themes. Uh, and for, for anybody who knows anything about this, right, there's at least some amount of rewriting that you're gonna have to do. You know, if we go back to my example site, you know, and we pull up one of these pages, um, you know, it's gonna look lovely because Olivero looks lovely, um, but it's not gonna look anything like the equivalent of this did over on the Drupal 7 site. Right, so if you want it to, you know, if you want it to be a lift and shift, if you want it to look the same on the other side, you're going to have to upgrade that theme, drop the PHP template engine, switch over to Twig, etc. If you have custom modules that do something, um, those are going to need to be remediated. So uh, I don't want to mislead you uh, again. And remember, in the case study we talked about, we we lopped about 75% off. That 75% is the boring. Let's create. 500 fields on 40 plus content types. Yeah, you don't need to do that. Let the robot do that. Now you can go out and refactor the code. There are some other tools you can use for this. Um, Matt actually happens to be in the room. He talked about this yesterday. He has a project called Retrofit. Uh, and Retrofit is super slick because you can actually take Drupal 7 code and run it in a modern version of Drupal. Um, so if you have a bunch of modules and you don't necessarily have time to do that refactoring or your team doesn't maybe have the skill to do the refactoring, that's okay. Um, retrofit can actually be added to your code base um, so you don't have to. Um, check out his talk from yesterday. There's his URL for that. Um, but it's super slick. Uh, and this will, again, significantly accelerate uh, how quickly you can do that update. Um, the other thing that I would look at is the upgrade status module. Uh, so Gabor, who's not in the room, but is running around at the conference, uh, built upgrade status. And what upgrade status really lets you do is dig down into your contrib modules. Um, I didn't really, for this particular uh, you know, demo, mess around with those contrib modules too much. Uh, but you know, if you go in and look at the Drupal 7 code base, you know, this site had some, some pretty standard ones, right? Like admin menu, um, C tools, date, devel, entity, all of those upgrade status is gonna tell us, right? Like there's a modern version of Drupal that does those things. But uh, you know, what about the views module? There, there isn't a modern version of that module because it's in core, but you still need to go through and do that level of remediation for sort of every contrib module, right? What is it? When did it start? What is it gonna be in the future? Uh, and upgrade status is really your, your tool for that um, to make sure that you're not losing any functionality or capabilities um, with that. If you've not used upgrade status before, um, I actually strongly recommend having it on any version of Drupal that you're running um, just because it's constantly gonna be telling you sort of what's going on in your code, how ready are you for the next thing. Uh, rumor has it, Drupal 11's coming out this year. Um, upgrade status is gonna be very helpful if you're running a Drupal 8, 9, or 10 site and you're trying to get ready for Drupal 11. Uh, and, it, and again, there is also a version of this that can be used for Drupal 7 um, to help figure out those contrib modules. Yeah. Oh, this slide has animation on it, that's exciting. Uh, so, some practical advice. Um, I know most of this talk has been about using tools to do it automatically. I just, I wanna take a moment and say, um, most organizations, most people that I know that have a 10-ish year old website, maybe have some stuff in that website that you don't need anymore or, or want anymore. Um, so on the one hand, there is a sense of urgency um, I, I want you to feel empowered walking out of here to go and use some of these tools to do it quickly and automatically. Um, but I also would maybe encourage you to channel your any inner Marie Kondo, right? Like, does this bring me joy? Is this something I'm still using? Um, just because you can migrate it quickly doesn't necessarily mean you should. Um, and doing some sort of at least high level content audit, content structure audit, 
before you dump everything into your new site would it, it might be cleansing it might be it might be therapeutic so uh, please do just take a minute um, and if you find actually that you um, have a very significant difference between where you're at today and where you were a decade ago. Um, if you're not familiar with the Drupal Entity Generator or DEG, um, it's actually a really slick tool for doing some of what we talked about in a slightly different way. So uh, if you've ever seen the Drupal Spec tool, I blogged about that a few years ago, this is kind of a successor to that. Um, you basically go out and use a spreadsheet, a Google Sheet, to map out your content architecture content types, fields, everything. And then you actually plug the entity generator into a Drupal site and it generates all of the structure for you. Um, so it's not as fast as AMA because you still have to do it, but believe me when I say this is still way faster than clicking through adding 500 fields in Drupal. Um, and it'll actually generate all of the content structure for you. So at that point you can use migrate and, and sort of do that migration path yourself. So. Um, Again, AMA is going to be faster, but if you, if you are in that boat of, well, we maybe only want like 20% of this or we need to completely change our content model, check this out. It's still going to be faster um, and less painful than doing everything by hand all the time. So in summary, uh, you need to do something. Uh, how you do it, what you do uh, is entirely up to you. But we're, we're at a point in the life cycle of Drupal 7 where... Um, it's still far enough away that it doesn't feel urgent. But for most organizations that I've interacted with, they're already planning 25 budgets, or they've already planned their 2025 budgets, right? So if you need to go do a significant upgrade on a site, if you need to do a significant migration on a site, um, you want to make sure you have resources for that. Uh, so don't wait till the last possible minute. Uh, we want to make sure you have time. So with that, I wanted to make sure we had some time to do questions, discussion, if anybody had it. Um, but thank you for coming. What questions do you have? Yeah. So I'm just mixed with the traditional migration method. Is there any way of using both? Like, I mean, let's say I do this on a couple of my content sites and it's too complex for this to handle. Yep. Yeah, so the, the question was, how, can you sort of do a mix of AMA and manual migration? So sort of, um, the challenge that you run into with AMA is it, it does detect all of the interdependencies between your content bundles. So if you have an event content type that you don't want to import and you have a people content type that somehow references those events, if you want to import people but you haven't imported, event, like you could have some challenges there. Um, as long as there's no cross dependencies between them, yeah, you, you, you saw I was kind of being very picky and choosy about what I imported. You have direct control. It doesn't just import everything, right? So you can pick what you want to migrate or not. The only challenge I think you're going to run into is, again, if you, if you have those sort of interlocking dependencies between different content bundles, then you, you may have challenges. But yeah, you can totally... Um, decide I'm going to delete these three content types, you can decide I'm going to manually migrate these, you can decide whatever you want to do. It's a good question. Yeah? So the question is, is there a way to import a content type without its dependencies? The short answer is no, and the reason for that is since AMA creates the content structure, and it imports the content, it doesn't have a way to do it without dependencies. You can with the migrate plugin, right? If you're writing a migrate YAML file, if you're doing that yourself, you can map whatever to whatever and you can, you can sort of like manually gloss over the dependencies, but the, the automation in AMA doesn't, it doesn't have that level of insight. It's, it's, it just, it looks at what's there and it recreates it. So there's no like man in the middle to, to hand wave. Yes. Uh, so two uh, uh, questions to fork off that as well. Uh, one of them is, is so it looks like you know you were able to import, say, your event content type, and it's located with its dependency. And I, let's say that, for instance, it used paragraphs. Mm -hmm. and I'm assuming it imported the paragraph children attached to it as well. If there was an error, like say it was a text block in a paragraph that had a wrong text format, when you go to that error review page, would it have the paragraph? 
paragraph ID along with the node ID? If we need a spot, it's a paragraph entry? That's a good question. I th it, it depends on how the paragraph module would bubble up that error. Theoretically, it would. At the very least, it would have the node. Um, I haven't done a D7 migration with paragraphs, so I don't know 100%. I think it would. Um, I think it would just skip that field. Um, if the, um, yeah, I think it would just skip that field. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. Uh, all the way in the back. Translations. Translations. Uh, yeah, it will do translations. Uh, I think it does not do revisions, but I should. It would do translations because I mean technically those are other nodes all linked together, right? But the problem with translations is it's gonna depend what modules in Drupal 7 you're using, right? So uh, that's one of those use cases where you might actually need to do the Drupal 9 version of AMA because it has many, many more. If you're on the fairly well-beaten path of like uh, the internationalization module, sorry, I'm, 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 I'm going in the Wayback Machine here to remember Drupal 7 module names. We're gonna stick with internationalization, that's the only one I'm remembering right now. If you're using that module, you should be fine. If you're using some other off the beaten path, yeah, exactly. But that's a good use uh, instance of where you might need to do the D9 version of it. Sorry, I saw another hand, yes. Are node IDs maintained or? I don't think they are, but let's do a quick check of that. So we're just, we're gonna do this one live. I don't, I don't know. Would help if I spelled node right. Uh, it is. They are maintained. And then are you able to get the maintained? Uh, they should. Well, so they are once you import aliases. I haven't imported the aliases here yet because the aliases in this case do require everything to be imported. So that is one that that is one area that might get you if you're not going to do everything. The aliases may have config requirements that aren't met. But yes, assuming you can import everything, you're going to get the aliases. Having said that, that's another great example of if you're not going to migrate everything, it's still probably faster to do this and then make sure your rules are correct with uh, path auto and regenerate aliases than it would be to try and do it without AMA. Like that is, look, AMA is not perfect. There's going to be some weird gotchas, but again, like when we think broad strokes, the gotchas are almost certainly going to be faster to deal with than rebuilding a Drupal 7 site entirely. It's a good question. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so the things that need review, it's all these same messages in here. So when you drill down into these items, they're different, you know, as always, there's gonna be different levels. So yeah, there are a ton, a ton, a ton of things that come in here. They're almost all going to be the same types of errors, though, or warnings, right? It's going to say it's, yeah, it's going to be something's an invalid choice. So what this probably means is either I did an order of operations wrong and I started importing nodes before some of the WYSIWYG um, config got moved over, or it just doesn't, you know, this site may not have the right text editor config, so maybe the old site's using a full HTML format that for some reason didn't migrate over into CK editor. Yeah. That's probably it. Um, as for you know the other errors, let's see what we've got in here. I think it's gonna take me right back to the same, yeah, it's the same UI, just slightly different levels of severity. So it'll let you drill down. The other ones are all gonna be entity validation errors, which there's going to be some of those. Most of them I think you can safely ignore. What you're really looking for is whether or not it actually failed to migrate something. Um, which again, it will tell you when you go in to migrations. And it'll tell you here if it actually like full out had to skip something, right? Like private files are the only thing we've skipped so far because I didn't set it up to do that for this demo. Good question. Yes. Correct. So it, 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 
Correct. So the question is, can you somehow sort of combine the recipes initiative here? Like, could you use a recipe-driven site to do this? And the short answer is you can, because remember, a recipe is just a starting point for a site. So let's imagine that we had an SEO recipe that downloaded schema.org and meta tag and path auto and pre-configured those modules. Those modules sort of interact with content bundles, but not really, right? They're, they're content adjacent. Um, so that's an example of a recipe that I think would actually accelerate your Drupal 10 site, especially if you wanted to change some of those rules versus what you had on Drupal 7. If you downloaded a event recipe on a site like this, I think that event recipe would actually not be very useful because AMA is going to migrate the event content type as it is on Drupal 7 into D10. So like a, a, a content type recipe that jump starts an event is maybe not useful. So I think the short answer is recipes will be useful on a site for a D10 site in that they will help jumpstart certain types of configuration or certain types of features on your site. Um, but they're not going to be universally helpful, if that makes sense. There's definitely going to be recipes that either would just flat out get ignored or not used um, or could even potentially conflict with old Drupal 7 decisions. Uh, but this is, again, this is a great time to look at, you, you know, like what did I do in Drupal 7 versus what do I want to do now? It may be that a recipe in a more modern way of doing things is a better way, in which case maybe that rebuild path as opposed to migrating using AMA is the better path. Yes, sir. Uh, the question is, is there any option for changing machine names? Um, the short answer with AMA is no. Um, you certainly could if you did it otherwise. You know, you could, you might be able to write some sort of transform to hook in and do it in the background, but I mean, again, AMA's, AMA's very powerful, but it's also very simple, right? Like, what you got is what you get. Okay. Yeah. All good questions. We've got some time left. Any other questions? Yes. So the question is, is there, like, does it expose anything basically to let you add on to AMA or would you have to go do it the old fashioned way? I mean, you can basically, now that you can see all the code, if you wanted to write, I don't know, let's say there, it, we were talking about internationalization a few minutes ago. Let's say there isn't a, a recommendation for internationalization. You, you could go write a normal migrate plugin for internationalized content and do it the old fashioned way or you could write a recommendation that hooks into AMA for that module and does it as part of AMA. You could do it either way. Um, I imagine that, you know, unless you happen to have multiple sites that you're doing or you're particularly generous, it's probably gonna be faster to do it the old fashioned way and just do it as a one-off for yourselves. Uh, but uh, it is open source and maybe just to put a plug in, uh, we, would, we would love for uh, contributions. So if you, if you did happen to feel the urge to, to write a, a plug-in and contribute it back, that would be, that would be lovely. You had a second part of your question? Yes. Um, and this is about one specific uh, thing. Um, so for, say, the file import, does it operate pretty much the same way as uh, the vanilla migrate? Because this is something that came up in another migration discussion I had where uh, I wouldn't do a file import and I wanted to migrate like the file managed table entry and then allow me to rsync later. Mm -hmm. and I Yeah, so what it, what it does, and I, I don't know enough about um, 
how exactly it does it to answer all of your question, but there is a config line here or a, a settings line where you're basically pointing to a file path. Um, and in this case, I basically just took my doc root from this Drupal 7 site um, and dumped it into the, the file path that um, my D10 site can access. So in this case, I've, I've literally just taken the entire Drupal 7 site and tossed it in. It's not getting bootstrapped fully, it's just sitting there. So I think, again, it's very simple. It's just if you have a node in D7 that's referencing a file, it will check for that file in the folders directory, or, sorry, in the files directory, move it into the files directory for Drupal 10, create a file in Drupal 10, do the reference. Like it's, it's a very simple move. Awesome. Yes. Does it work with Dev Desktop? So short answer is yes. Um, longer answer, Dev Desktop does not support PHP 8. Um, so you would almost certainly have to do the Drupal 9 version. Um, it, it will run anywhere, right? So if you still have Dev Desktop working, uh, I would strongly recommend moving to Lando or DDEV. Uh, but uh, if you still have Dev Desktop working, yes, it would work as long as you're using the appropriate version of PHP and Drupal. Anybody else? Lovely. Please high five Matt on the way out because uh, Retrofit is awesome. I wish Wim was here to say that as well, but thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your conference. <laughs> <laughs>